What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm gonna to show you guys not only how we can make a wireframe out of any mesh inside of Cinema 4D as I've done in the past, but this time I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually have that wireframe draw on and animate. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now I'm gonna start off with this model I got from Sketchfab. If anybody's interested in knowing where I got this, leave me a comment down below. I'll happily share the link with you guys, but I have it separated into two different parts. I have the character, and then I have the little raft that he's sitting on right here. But I'm actually gonna merge these together so I can have both of them be wireframe. So I just have them both selected, connect the object and delete. And now we just have one mesh right here. Now what we wanna do is come up here to the top and we're gonna click right here where it says edges. So I'm gonna select this. Now you can see we have our outline of our character here. And if we come up here to select, come down here to select all. Now you can see it's yellow and that means that all the edges are selected. Now, if we come over here in the viewport in just an empty area and right click, come down here to the bottom where it says edge to spline right here under convert. I'm going to left click on this. And now if I come back over here to my objects panel, scroll this down, you can see we now have a spline for our character. So I'm just going to click on my viewport to deselect everything, then come back up here and select the model mode. So I'm just going to select the mesh. And now you can see that we have a spline here that's going to correlate with our mesh here. So the next step from here is actually coming over here to where it says mode graph. I'm going to left click, come down here to where it says most spline, and I'm going to select this. Now I can easily come over here and if I hold down the alt key and then left click twice, that's going to hide our mesh right here and the spline because I'm going to come up here to most spline. And then if I come down here under the attributes panel, click on spline, and that's going to change the simple right here to spline. So let me do that again here under object. Right now the mode is simple. If I click on spline, it's going to switch it to spline right here. So if I select this and then come back up here to my spline that we had just made, left click, bring that down here to source spline. Now you can see that we have our most spline that will control our outline here. Now if we want to control the sizing of it, like right now it's a little bit thick, right here under spline, under most spline, you can see the width. You could change this to like 0.5 and it's going to make it a little bit smaller there for us, in which this will become important later on. Now I'm going to scroll back here a little bit and let's come back over here under objects and right here under end. If I just scroll this down, you can actually see now we have our wireframe animating on. Now from here, if you want to render this out, I'm going to show you two options you have. The first one using just a standard render and then the second option if you guys want to use Redshift. So starting off with the first option here, I'm just going to select off here inside of my viewport. And then right here where we have our different spline objects here, I'm going to left click on a rectangle and then right here, I'm going to select circle. But then for the radius, I could just make this one if I want, but we're going to control it within our most spline here. So it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to get it out of the way. And then down here, I'm going to left click on this top icon right here, the first green one. And I'm going to come down here and make a sweep. And so I'm going to make the circle. I'm going to click and drag it under the sweep first. And then the most spline, I'm going to select this, drag it under a second. And depending on how many vertices that you actually have and how dense your mesh is, this might take a second to convert over. But at the end of the day, this is going to turn our splines into a mesh, which we can then render out with the standard render. Now on my computer, it did take a couple minutes there. So if it looks like it froze up, just give it a minute to calculate everything and you should be fine. But now looking at it, if I scroll in here, you can see that it actually made a mesh here. So if I want to change the sizing of that mesh, I would come down here to most spline, come over here to spline right here where it says width, you can always change it to like 0.2. And again, once you change these attributes here, it's gonna have to recalculate. So maybe you wanna do it before you bring it into the suite, but it's gonna have to recalculate everything in which it's gonna take a few moments to do so. So it looks like now we have our mesh a little bit thinner here. So from here, it's as easy as just coming up here, making a new material if you want. Maybe let's make this one just a different color. Like let's make it red. Just click and drag it onto your sweep here. And now we added our texture onto our wireframe here. Now, as you can see right now, everything is kind of see-through. It's in a model here, in which if you want to render out a wireframe, you probably don't want it to look like that. So a tip I would say is come over here to your actual mesh. I'm going to hold down the control, just make a duplicate of it. And then I'm actually going to unhide it. So we have it here underneath our wireframe. And if I actually just come over here, delete all of those, and then maybe let's make like a black texture on here. So I'm going to change the color. Just change it to black, put it on my character. Now you have a black texture underneath your wireframe there in which I could probably take the reflectance off. So it looks a little bit better there. Now you can see that we have black underneath our wireframe here. 
And if we want to animate this on, you would come over here to sweep and right here where it says end growth, you would actually just start sliding this through till we have it down to zero. And then right here under my character spine, I'm actually going to hide this so we only see our stuff right on. All right, so I'm going to lay keyframe right here and this is about 72 frames long. So I'm just going to go to the end here, make this end growth 100, lay another keyframe here. And now let's watch this right on. So if I scroll through my timeline, you can actually see the mesh start to write on there. Now, as you can see inside of my tutorial here, just working with this dense mesh using this method right here, using the sweep, it's gonna be extremely slow. So I would take caution and maybe only use it with models that are not so dense and have a lot of vertices there. But if you do have a really dense model, I would suggest using Redshift, which will allow you to work a lot faster here, especially inside of your viewport, and it will render a lot better too. So I'm gonna come back into my scene here. And I'm actually going to take my most spline out. I'm going to delete this sweep right here. And then we need to make sure we're actually working within Redshift right now. So if I come back over here to my edit render settings, click on this. And instead of being in standard, I'm going to click on Redshift. And now we're inside of Redshift mode. So if I come over here, click on most spline again, come over here to tags. Let's look for under render tags, the Redshift object. Now, if I left click on this and you come up here to where it says curves, under mode, you would just come down here and let's say we would just do like hair strands and you can see that we have thickness and everything in here, but let me actually come over here, the red shift render view and let's render this out. And now you can see how fast it actually rendered and everything, but this is our outline rendered within red shift here. Now, if I change the thickness to like 0.1, now you can see that it got extremely thin in here. And you can see how much faster this method is rather than using the sweep on our model here. And if I come over here, the most blind, bring this down to zero. Let's lay a keyframe here. Bring this up to 72, 100, lay another keyframe. And if I play this through, it's playing out real time within our viewport here. Now, of course, it's writing on really fast because this is only 72 frames. So, of course, the longer the duration, the smoother this is going to be. So, if you made this something like 200 frames, and let's take this end keyframe, drag it all the way here to the end. Let's go to beginning and click on play. Now, you can see it's writing on a lot better there. And if you have your model separated into different pieces where you can actually control how fast each individual piece writes on, you're going to get more control over it and you're going to get better results. But for this example, I just showed you everything is one mesh altogether. So now that we have this animated through and everything, let's just add a texture on here. Now we're already inside of redshift mode. So if I just double click here inside of my materials panel, that's going to automatically bring up a redshift material in which again, maybe let's make this red. All you'd have to do is left click, drag it on the most spline, and then let me come here to the end, come over here to redshift, redshift view. Yep, it looks like now we have our red texture on here in which you can go through and manipulate that again. And this is looking a little bit thick here. And remember, this is being controlled by the redshift tag. So down here, most spline, if you change the width in here, it's going to change it in the viewport, but not inside of your redshift render. So you make sure you come here to your redshift object tag and you would change it here under curve. So let's make this maybe like 0.1. And now it's a lot thinner there. And you can easily just go render this out the same way you would render anything out in Redshift. Now it's just working on a project for Netflix. This had came up. That's why I made this tutorial because it took me a little bit to figure out how to make an animatable wireframe. Because again, as I was saying, I have a tutorial before where I show you guys how to make a wireframe using the Atom Array, but that's not animatable. So this right here helped me get through and be able to deliver everything I needed for that TV show. So hopefully that helps you guys out. And again, if you have Redshift, I would absolutely say use that method. But if you're stuck with just the standard method, then you can use the sweep. Be Larry of how dense your mesh is because it's going to be extremely slow in your machine i'm running a threadripper 64 core here with a 4090 and you can see the hangups that i was running into when i was using the standard method but you have to work with what you have so again if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe leave me a comment down below let me know if this helped you guys out and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video i'll see you soon take care